Hi everyone. We need to talk about boar bristle hairbrushes and their amazing benefits for hair health. It's really shocking how quickly cultures can just completely forget about a practice that in the past was widely used, like by literally everybody. And boar bristle brushes are a perfect example of this cultural forgetting phenomenon. And that's why we need to talk about them and their amazing benefits. This video is going to be all about boar bristle hairbrushes. So if you've been wondering about them or you've had questions about them, I will hopefully be covering all of the most frequently ask questions in this video. So we're going to talk about what the main benefits of boar bristle hair brushing are, how women in history used boar bristle brushes to care for their long and luscious locks of hair, how boar bristle brushes can help you go longer between washing and restyling of your hair. I'll touch on the different types of boar bristle brushes that are available on the market today and then give you my own recommendation of the one type of boar bristle brush that I recommend for every hair type to try. I will cover the importance of keeping your boar bristle brush clean and how to do so easily. And finally, I will be covering a very frequently asked question and it's for those with curly hair like mine, covering the topic of if you can use a boar bristle brush with curly hair, spoiler alert, yes you can. And I will be showing you how I use a boar bristle brush on my own curly hair and what that looks like in my weekly hair routine. So if you'd like answers to any of these questions, just keep on watching. So before we jump into the topic at hand, I'd like to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Herba Mama Holistic Health YouTube channel. So our state of internal health is at least as important for growing long hair as the things that we do to our hair on a topical level. And that's where the Herba Mama Holistic Health YouTube channel comes in. Their videos are equally informative and relaxing to learn from. Naturopath and master herbalist Kieran Parsons educates us on the various benefits and properties of natural herbs for our internal health, which is very important for anyone who wants to grow long, healthy hair. So in their newest video, they're actually doing a video that's focused on herbs that can benefit your hair health, as well as your hormonal health, which we all know can often be linked to our hair health. And I think all of you should check it out. On this video, we'll learn about herbs like turmeric, ashwagandha, pine bark, and nettle which can help benefit our hair health through nourishing our bodies, improving our circulation, lowering inflammation, and reducing stress. So if this sounds interesting to you, be sure to check out the Herba Mama Holistic Health YouTube channel, which will be linked for you in the description. When most people think of a hairbrush, they think of those typically plastic detangling type of hairbrushes with very rigid, fairly far spaced apart bristles that are designed to penetrate into the hair and take out tangles hopefully gently, although possibly not very gently. So a boar bristle hairbrush, even though it's also technically called a brush, is entirely a different animal than these modern detangling brushes, and I'm going to explain why. First of all, we have to cover definitions. For the rest of this video, when I talk about a boar bristle brush, I am talking about a 100% boar bristle brush, which means there are only boar bristles on the brush. There are no nylon or plastic or wood bristles mixed in with the boar bristles, and this is an important distinction. So when we're talking about a 100% boar bristle hairbrush, this is not a brush that is designed to detangle your hair. Yes, hair does need to be detangled and it is important to detangle your hair thoroughly before using a boar bristle brush. You can use anything from your fingers, which is what I use, to a wide tooth wooden comb or even a wooden brush to do this. And then that's where the boar bristle hairbrush comes in. So you might be wondering at this point, if a boar bristle hairbrush is not designed to detangle your hair, what on earth is it even for? That's a great question. A boar bristle hairbrush is basically an amazing hair health, scalp health, and styling tool, not a detangling tool. So it's a tool that's designed to clean the scalp and clean the hair, pick up any natural scalp oils from your scalp and bring them all the way down the rest of your hair. So it cleans your scalp and in the process conditions the rest of your hair. It also is amazing for smoothing and softening the hair. And it's an amazing hair styling tool for any type of updo or protective style you may want to put your hair into. 
It's also a very effective tool for when you are transitioning away from using shampoo or at least using shampoo as often. It can really work wonders at helping you draw out the time between washes because it is an effective method of dry cleansing the hair. So how does a boar bristle brush do all of these things? First of all, we have to talk about the fact that a boar bristle brush is literally made up of hairs. Bristles are hairs from a pig, so they are much stiffer than human hairs, obviously, but they're still hairs. And because they're so closely packed together, they basically form this uniform surface across the top of the bristles. And what this does is it's basically this cleansing surface. It's a little bit abrasive, but that's kind of what you want when you're cleaning your hair. You want those bristles to really get in there, especially get into your scalp and pick up any oils or buildup or dust or debris out of your hair and clean it out. And in the case of oils, it draws those oils down the rest of your hair. Of course, you do need to be careful when using any type of tool, such as a brush or comb in your hair. So you still need to use it gently and you need to use it in a controlled manner especially if you have curls like me, but we're going to be talking about all of that later in the video. So most of us have heard of the old adage of brushing your hair a hundred strokes a night as being something that many historical women would try to practice in their daily life. I don't know about you, but I was always rather confused at this saying because when I heard brush your hair a hundred strokes a night, I was thinking of those modern, you know, plastic detangling brushes that I associated with a lot of pain on my scalp, a lot Lot of hair breakage and hair damage, messing up of my curls, etc, etc. And so the thought of using one of these for a hundred strokes through your hair every night just seemed very counterintuitive. But what we did, what I didn't realize was that that saying was actually talking about a 100% boar bristle brush. And now that I've used one and I've gotten into the groove of how to work it into my routine, I can totally understand how it would be very beneficial and health giving for your scalp and hair to brush through it for a hundred strokes every night. Now I'm not saying everyone should necessarily be doing this. I probably am not doing a hundred strokes a night just because again, I am careful with a boar bristle brush since I have more curly hair, but whenever I do use it, in the times in my hair routine when it is convenient and logical to use it in my routine. It is a truly amazing at conditioning my hair, cleaning it, improving its texture, and allowing me therefore to go longer in between washing and restyling of my hair. It also is amazing for stimulating my scalp. Can I just say that I've, ever since I've been really getting into using the boar bristle brush on a more regular basis, and I've been noticing a lot more baby hairs around my temples, which is the area that I typically struggle more with, with having my hairline go like a little bit back. So I'm always very happy when I see baby hairs growing and I chalk it up largely to the boar bristle brush, stimulating my scalp in ways that it wasn't being stimulated before. Now, another benefit is that the longer or curlier your hair is, the more a boar bristle brush can be helpful for conditioning by bringing your natural scalp oils, which are amazing for your hair, bringing them all the way down to the ends of your hair. Whereas otherwise for very long or curly hair, those oils would have a very hard time traveling all the way down to the ends, which is why my ends typically, if I'm not doing something like boar bristle brushing or adding oil, they do get dried out very quickly. History of boar bristle brushes. So in Western cultures from at least the 1700s onward, boar bristle brushes were a very common widespread tool. And by the Victorian period, I would argue that pretty much every man, woman, and child likely owned a boar bristle brush or even a boar bristle comb that they used as an invaluable hairstyling and hair care tool. Nowadays, since the advent of modern plastic brushes, as well as the modern beauty industry, which produces bottles and bottles of the these chemical concoctions that we can supposedly use to achieve healthy hair, boar bristle brushing has been really quickly forgotten by most people. However, in almost every historical hair care manual I have personally referenced from the Victorian and Edwardian periods, boar bristle brushes are mentioned every time as being a very amazing tool and necessary tool for hair health, dry cleansing of the hair, stimulating the scalp, relaxing one before bed, increasing shine of the entire length of the hair, etc, etc. It's also mentioned as a very effective tool for being able to keep your hair and scalp clean 
in between washes. In fact, in most historical hair care manuals I have looked at, frequent hair washing is referenced as being once every two weeks, with some people probably washing once a month, I would imagine. And the way they did this, apart from their scalps just being adjusted to this kind of routine, was that they used boar bristle brushes to keep their scalps and hair clean through the amazing dry cleansing effects of the brush. So middle class and wealthy women who could afford maids I'm sure would have been having their maids brush out their hair every night with those proverbial 100 strokes a night and they seem to have widely believed that this contributed to their hair health and shine and luster and longevity. It makes perfect sense that they would have used a tool like a boar bristle brush in this way since they didn't have the massive modern beauty industry producing bottles and bottles of these chemical concoctions to style their hair. Rather they had to rely on on a high quality tool that they could buy once and then just keep using. So if you think about it, boar bristle brushes represent a very long human tradition of a slower, more methodical, and less consumptive way of caring for hair and caring for our bodies in general. So precursors for the boar bristle brush included wooden and bone combs and wooden brushes, which could fulfill some of the same benefits as the boar bristle brush, such as distributing scalp oils all the way down the hair and removing buildup from the scalp. I have had a few people ask me about or bristle brush alternatives. So if you are not a vegan, you're just opposed to pig products, there are goat hair brushes. They may, however, be a lot softer than boar bristle brushes. Then there are wooden brushes and combs. These are obviously not exactly comparable, but they do have some overlapping benefits as boar bristle brushes. And finally, for vegans, there are sisal brushes, which are made with a plant fiber. And although I've never used them, they do look pretty similar. I'd like to quickly note that boar bristle brushes are made using boar bristles that are a byproduct of the meat industry. So in other words, they're taken from a pig that has already been killed. The pig was not killed for its bristles, it was killed for meat, and the bristles were not harvested from a living pig. So if that helps anybody to make a decision. So again, a boar bristle brush is essentially a tool that you can buy once and it can replace bottles and bottles of commercial hair products that you would have otherwise had to buy like shampoos, styling products, because a boar bristle brush is just this amazing reusable all-in-one tool for cleansing the hair, improving health, improving shine, styling the hair, etc, etc. I feel like I just keep repeating this but it just can't be repeated often enough because it's an entirely different philosophy of looking at hair care than what we're used to in the modern day. Now historically, all the way from Victorian paintings and photos of women in their hair all the way up to old Hollywood stars, we see a certain type of curl pattern specifically in hair that you never ever see in modern day people's hair today and that's because it was achieved through historical techniques, mostly including a boar bristle brush and since people don't use boar bristle brushes anymore, we don't see this anymore. So basically what it is, rather than curls like what you see in my hair right now where it's all different individual locks and curls, these curls were more like unified, like the entire body of hair just formed this wavy pattern. We see this in a more structured way in old Hollywood stars. This was known as the Marcel wave. Even someone like Marilyn Monroe, you kind of see curls like this in her hair. And it was achieved partly through, I'm not sure, whatever process was used in the Marcel curling process. But then after that, it was an essential step to use a boar bristle brush to brush through the curls. And even before the Marcel wave phenomenon, Victorian women and Wardian women with the very long hair, you see them having this, you know, very wavy unified curl pattern throughout their hair. I think it's very stunning and very beautiful and not something we see very often today. So now let's talk about how boar bristle brushes can help you go longer in between washes and why this is important. Dry cleansing of the hair with boar bristle brushes. So what is the main reason our modern Western culture has forgotten about boar bristle brushing? I would argue that it mostly has to do with the advent of indoor plumbing and showers in every home, which has of course led to a reliance on the modern commercial beauty industry and their shampoos and conditioners and various styling products that are typically designed to be used with water. So in other words, while in history people would rely on a reusable tool like a boar bristle brush to have nice looking hair, 
Nowadays, people typically rely on lots of water and styling products to have nice looking hair. So since regular showering and washing the hair was not really an option for historical people, that is why they use boar bristle brushes because boar bristle brushes are an amazingly effective way of dry cleansing the hair. If you ask your typical modern day person, can you clean something while it's dry? Most people will probably say no. They'll probably mention, no, you need soap, you need water to get something clean. And for many situations, this is true, like laundry or whatever. But when it comes to hair care, a better way of keeping your hair cleansed on a daily basis, certainly, is to dry cleanse it by using a tool like a boar bristle brush, because then you're not constantly getting your hair wet and manipulating it while it's in this wet and weakened state. Instead, you're caring for it in a very simple, less low tech kind of way, but in a way that actually contributes to its health rather than decontributing, <laughs> if that's a word. Yeah, so because a boar bristle brush is made up of these very closely packed, very fine bristles, it does a great job at just really getting in there and cleaning into the hairs and into the scalp. And if you looked at the hairs under a microscope, I'm sure that a boar bristle brush would also help to smooth down the scales of the hair cuticles as well. So while boar bristle brushes cleanse the hair, they also do a great job at simultaneously conditioning it because rather than doing what a shampoo does with hair oils, which is that it just strips them away immediately, a boar bristle brush does not strip them away, but rather it redistributes them. So it distributes them away from your scalp and down the rest of the length of your hair and just throughout the whole depth of your hair if you're boar bristle brushing thoroughly. And this is the most, the best conditioning treatment that you could do for your hair is just by distributing your scalp's natural hair oils. So personally, I have been using a boar bristle brush much more recently because just the process of researching my first historical hair care videos really showed me the benefits of boar bristle brushing and it's reignited my passion in incorporating it into my routine. I have found that for me, it's helped me really spread out my wash days even more. I was already only washing my hair once a week, but now that it's winter out and I'm also just pregnant and feeling tired a lot more, <laughs> I've been able to drag out my washes to at least every two weeks, which has been awesome. And because you Usually if I went past a week, my hair would start looking very dried out at the ends, just kind of bedraggled. And the boar bristle brush helps keep my scalp clean and it redistributes those oils down the length of my hair, which keeps the length of my hair much more conditioned and healthy looking than it would have looked otherwise if I wasn't using the boar bristle brush. Different types of boar bristle brushes. So after hearing about all of these benefits of boar bristle brushing, I know you're probably wondering, okay, what boar bristle brush should I buy? Because if you just Google boar bristle brushes, you're gonna see there's many different types. So now I'm gonna get into briefly some of the different types that we see on the market today and the type of boar bristle brush that I personally recommend to everyone with every hair type to use. So right off the bat, I'm going to say the type of boar bristle brush that I recommend is basically a type that is as close as possible to what people were using in history. Because let's face it, all of these benefits of boar bristle brushing is coming from history. And so it makes sense to use a brush that's as close as possible to the brushes that were in use for thousands of years throughout history, rather than just using some modern boar bristle brush and assuming it's going to have the same benefits when it hasn't yet stood the test of time that these other brushes have. So that is why I only recommend a 100% boar bristle brush, which is a brush that only has boar bristles in it, no nylon bristles mixed in. Now you might be a little confused when you see these for sale online because they're typically marketed as being only for those with thin and fine hair, but that's just modern lingo because they don't really understand how boar bristle brushes actually are supposed to work. They're not supposed to detangle the hair. I mean, that's actually correct. Only a someone with thin and fine hair could detangle their hair with a boar bristle brush. But as we've already mentioned at the beginning of the video, a boar bristle brush is not designed to detangle the hair. It's a completely separate tool. So whatever you're going to do to detangle your hair should be done first and should be done separately. For me, I use my fingers. For other people, you might want to use a wide tooth wooden comb or a wooden brush but I definitely recommend keeping these two functions separate of the detangling versus the boar bristle brushing. And I'll explain why in a moment. 
Also, a word about different shapes of boar bristle brushes. Today you'll often see some sort of like round cylindrical boar bristle brushes and those are typically often mixed with nylon bristles and they're usually used for things like blowouts, which of course is a completely different application than what we're talking about. So I just recommend a flat boar bristle brush. This might be called a paddle brush if it's a square or a rectangle or it might be just be an oval shape as long as it's flat and not a round cylindrical shape. So why do I prefer a 100% boar bristle brush even though it means that it can't detangle my hair? If you've watched my other hair care videos, you'll know that I only choose to detangle my hair with my fingers because there's just less chance of breakage when, that, when you're using your fingers versus a comb or a brush. So that's the main reason for me. But I think even for most people who don't choose to use their fingers to detangle their hair, let's say you choose to use a wooden comb or something like that, I think it's still wise to separate your detangling from your boar bristle brushing because if you want to really get into the benefits of boar bristle brushing your hair, 100 strokes a night or whatever, you're not going to want to have detangling bristles mixed into this because then it's going to totally negate the benefits of this practice since the more you pass a detangling tool through your hair over and over, the more likely you are to cause breakage. Whereas a softer 100% boar bristle brush mostly sails over the surface of the hair, so it's very less likely to cause damage. Now if you have thick hair or curly hair and you're wondering how to make a 100% boar bristle brush work for you, stay tuned until the end of the video because I'll be giving a demo of that. Boar bristle brushes and curly hair. Okay, so now that we've covered all of this important background information about boar bristle brushes, I'd like to get into one of my most frequently asked questions about boar bristle brushes, which is, can I use a boar bristle brush if I have curly hair? Now the answer is yes, you can. I have very curly hair and I've been using a boar bristle brush. That's not to say that everyone with curly hair should use a boar bristle brush or will want to use a boar bristle brush because it does have certain ways of affecting the hair that may not be desirable to you. So that's that's what I'm going to talk about now. First of all, I don't think anyone needs a boar bristle brush to have healthy hair. As you may already know, most of my hair care journey, I grew my hair from chin length to hip length using only my fingers to detangle for the most part, and I never really got fully into the boar bristle brushing until recently, simply because I didn't know how to incorporate it into my hair routine. So yeah, if you have curly hair and you're just happily finger detangling your hair, great. Just let this be a seed planted in your mind for the future maybe or something like that. But I would say that if you have curly hair and you're feeling drawn towards boar bristle brushing and its benefits, then you don't need to be afraid of it and I'm going to be explaining to you how to make it work for your hair. Now first of all, I'm going to put a caveat in here that if you're a curly haired person who enjoys having very separated, very defined curls on most days, then a boar bristle brush may be something you just want to avoid completely or maybe you just want to use it in a very limited manner. A great way to do this is simply by boar bristle brushing your hair the night before you plan to wash it. This can be before you do some kind of pre-poo treatment, like an oil treatment or a mask. Now, for someone like me, maybe you're a curly haired person who doesn't wash your hair except for once a week. In my case, I've been going once every two weeks. So there's quite a spectrum of what my hair looks like within that time range. It really does change. I'm gonna call this my hair cycle. So at the beginning of my hair cycle, this is actually day four hair. And you can see that even on day four, my curls are still relatively defined. And that's because I've been purposely just caring for my hair in a way to preserve the curls on these first few days. And I have not been using a boar bristle brush and I have not been adding any oils or finger detangling yet. Now, as my hair cycle progresses, my hair does become just a lot different. So the curls become more stretched out and flattened down and tangles will begin to develop, which is why I will begin probably tonight going in with my fingers and beginning the process of detangling my hair and separating the curls. Once I have gone through a few consecutive evenings of working through the tangles gently with my fingers, that's when I will feel ready to begin the boar bristle brush. And I'm gonna be giving you a demo of that in a moment. And I'd just like to mention that during the latter half of my hair cycle, if you will, actually probably more like three quarters of my hair cycle now that I'm going like two weeks between washes, the boar bristle brush has really been an invaluable tool for me in helping to keep my hair looking nice, smooth, moisturized all the way down to the ends and helping me to style it into all of the protective styles that I love so much. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I use a boar bristle brush for my thick curly hair. And of course I'm starting with hair that's already quite stretched out and finger detangled. 
And you can see I like to work with these small sections at a time. So I'm working from the bottom to the top. And if I come to any tangles, I carefully work those out with my fingers so I don't cause matting with the brush. And then I start bringing the brush into the areas of my hair and my head that are more oily. And that way I'm picking up my natural oils on the brush before bringing the brush back to the drier areas of my hair, such as my hair ends. So the main points to remember for thick or curly hair are to work in small sections and to begin with hair that is already thoroughly detangled. Don't expect the brush to reach all the way through thick hair, that's why we work with it in small sections at a time. Finally, I'm just going to quickly touch on the importance of properly cleaning a boar bristle brush and showing you all how I clean my boar bristle brush in a very quick and convenient manner. So since the boar bristle brush is such an effective way of dry cleansing your hair, what this means is that essentially, let's say you have oily hair or there's some dust in your hair and then you go in with your boar bristle brush and it helps it look cleaner. That's partly because the brush itself is picking up the oils and the dust out of your hair. So it would be pretty silly to then go in the next day with this same brush that has all the oils and the dust on it from yesterday and then put it back into your hair when you're trying to clean your hair and then essentially you're just putting some of this oil back on your hair. So that's why it's so important to clean the brush. We're not washing our hair every day, but it is a good idea to wash your brush every day, especially if your hair is more oily. So with that being said, the way that I quickly and easily clean my war bristle brush is I keep a spray bottle in my bathroom of double strength cleaning vinegar. So this is just white vinegar, but it's double strength. When I'm ready to clean my brush, I lightly spritz the bristles with this vinegar and I use my fingers to massage it into the brush or the brush's bristles. And I might let it sit on there for a minute or two or even a few minutes. And then I will typically just get some water on my fingers and then go in again and massage the bristles again with the water to wash that vinegar and any oils that the vinegar picked up out of the brush bristles. I don't recommend holding your boar bristle brush straight under a running tap of water because that's likely to damage your brush over time. Now, another problem with boar bristle brushes in terms of dirt and dust buildup can be that it can collect dust and lint near the base of the bristles. So the way to deal with this, this is something you wouldn't need to do as frequently, but you can use a, something like a rat tail comb or a thin hair stick or really anything that's long and thin, and you just pass it into those spaces at the base of the bristles and pull out any dust and lint that's in there. And then you can follow this process with the vinegar washing that I already described. Okay, everyone, I hope you found this video about boar bristle brushing and its benefits wildly informative and helpful. If you did, be sure to give the video a like, leave your comments or questions below. I may not have time to get to all the questions in the comments, so if you really want to get a hold of me, be sure to leave me an email. If you found this video very helpful, you can also consider sending me a super thanks through the button below this video. It's just a nice handy way of sending me a quick monetary thank you that YouTube has built in. And I also have a link in my description for how you can virtually buy me a coffee as well. And thanks, I really appreciate it. So if you have heard all of these benefits of boar bristle brushing and you're thinking, great, now where do I get a boar bristle brush from? I'm already working on that for you. So I have several links of boar bristle brushes that I recommend. The reason that I have several is because I have my sort of top picks of boar bristle brushes that are available on Amazon. But the problem is that these are often out of stock, it seems lately. I don't know if lots of you guys have been buying them up and that producers are just not able to catch up or whatever. So that's why I've included my top picks, which may or may not be out of stock at the moment. But then I also have some other picks below that, which are maybe not as ideal, but they're still good choices. I will say that my most ideal boar bristle brush would actually be like a replica of the historical brushes that they used. And I have my eye on maybe buying an actual antique boar bristle brush. And if I do, I will surely make a video about it because I'm really excited to try one of those out and to show you guys. For the other hair products that I recommend that you can buy on Amazon, I have a bunch of links for those in the description as well as in the pinned comment. And if you'd like to see my complete 
list of hair care products I recommend, then there's a link to a page on my blog. So if you enjoy historical natural hair care content as well as historical handmade fashion, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notifications bell so you won't miss a future video. I have so many ideas for historical hair care and skincare videos, so you'll definitely want to subscribe so you don't miss any of that goodness that's coming in the future. The accompanying blog post for this video will be linked in the description and on my website I also have a free weekly email newsletter that you can sign up for. Finally, I also have a YouTube membership that you can join for approximately five USD a month and you get access to an exclusive members only chat group as well as 24 hours of early ad free access to each of my videos that I post on YouTube. So that is a great perk as well. And if you'd like to learn the recipe for my favorite herbal hair growth oil of all time, you can watch that video here. Okay, see you on the next video.